Welcome to this next installment in the SOLIDWORKS course. I wanted to reinforce some of the constraints and relations we learned last time. So this will be an example of how constraints and relations can work further than what we've already done. I have the solid in SOLIDWORKS and I wanted to generate the sketch that would produce this as a means of giving some extra practice and reinforcement to the sketching skills we learned in the past two videos. This is uh, one of the most important skills to have in SOLIDWORKS because everything else comes from sketches. So, without further ado, I'll start a new part. I'll sketch on the top plane this time and I'll push Control 8 to get normal to it. And hit the sketch button. Now, I'll do horizontal line Oops, and when I double clicked it, made a few other lines here. Now I'll do a vertical. Double click to get rid of the line. Horizontal, double click, and vertical. So the question is, how can I get these lines to be constrained in a way that it would look like these four lines on the outside of the part? Well, to do that, I'll use what we call construction lines or center lines. I'll choose the center point of each line. You'll see when I hover my mouse close it just pops right up. And I'll select the midpoint and I'll select the origin and say coincident. Then I can just make this horizontal. And now both of these lines will always have the origin at the center. And uh, their centers will always be horizontal because of this reference line known as a center line. Uh, you know center lines because they're dotted and they're only used for reference. They're never used to make a, a finished product. But we're referencing off these center lines. So now notice when I move this line, this line has a constraint on it. We don't want that, so I'll delete it. And now I can move this without uh, this line moving as well. Now I'll choose a center line, center and center. From that I'll select the midpoint and put it right on the origin, coincident. I'll make this vertical. And now I notice I, I have kind of a rectangle, but if I make these lines equal. Now we have a square no matter what length these lines are. I've done a full constraint on these. Finally I can select these four lines and I can choose equal. Oh, select this one too, equal. So now all four of these lines change length together because they are equal length. All right, with that being said, I can add again some center lines if I wanted to. And this is, uh, again, only used for reference. And uh, in fact, just to help constrain things, I'll put some dimensions down here. I'll make this six inches long. I'll make this, say, four inches. and I can make a three-point arc and I can use this point created by the center lines I can select the midpoint of the arc and that point and say merge and now we know that the middle of the arc will always be at the intersection of this line and this line which is what we can observe in this model that being said, I can add another three-point arc and I can start adding some relations and I'll put another arc over here. First one, tangent. Second one, tangent. Third one, tangent and tangent. 
Excellent. Now all I have to do is give it a dimension. I'll make this oh, two inches is a bit too big so the sketch physically will not work out if I give that a radius of two inches. So I'll get a radius of one. Still not working. There you go. Three quarters of an inch seems to work. So there's 0 0.75. Now on this next corner maybe I can save a little bit of time. So I'll make a three-point arc again. And instead of drawing my center lines, I can simp simply choose the center point and this vertical line and say coincident. So now the center point will always be located along this line. And then I can locate it this way on this line by saying coincident. So now the center point of the circle can't go in, or the arc can't go anywhere because it's on this line and this line, so it's fully constrained in that sense. So I don't have to make these center lines, I can just make it coincident if I wanted to. Again, adding in these three point arcs. I'll add the same constraints and relations and say tangent. tangent, tangent, tangent. And giving it the same dimension of 0 0.75. And we're fully constrained. So you can see we have identical pieces. Could be a straight mirror image and uh, we've done less work here. Well, what if I could save further time still? What I'll do this time is I'll make a three-point arc and put it directly on these two points instead of adding these fillets over here. And I'll make it coincident and notice this arc is fully constrained. And then I can use that sketch fillet feature that we went with and I can make this 0.29 and then I can do it the same thing on this side 0.29 and again we have done even less work and we've ended up with the same uh, the same result so I'll go ahead and do that again this is to illustrate that you can do um, several different things in SOLIDWORKS and get the same result. So now we're done with our sketch fillets. Now I recall having some holes So we've got some holes at the centers of these arcs and one in the middle. I can go ahead and add that. We'll add four holes, varying sizes. You can select all four and say that all four should be equal. I can give them a dimension of half an inch and there they are and finally add one in the center we can make that five inches and there's the sketch that can uh, make a part that's similar to what we see here <clears throat> the idea behind sketching of course is that everything should be fully constrained uh, in the industry, especially in engineering, when you have a sketch that isn't fully constrained, it's not taken very seriously, and it's not trusted, certainly. So the mark of a good engineer is fully constraining every sketch, making sure that everything is black. And when you've done it, SolidWorks will tell you fully defined down here, so there's no question. 
Um, so I hope this was really helpful in seeing how constraints and relations and tangents and being co-centric and coincidence and all work together to fully constrain a sketch. Um, being able to use these relations can sometimes take a lot of thoughts, especially effectively using construction lines. So keep practicing. Uh, there's plenty of resources that help with sketching. And in the next video, we'll cover some of the very, very last sketching skills, and then we'll start making solids. See you next time.